and the rest of the world didn't know anything happened until 1976, when there was a, a Russian scientist, <laughs> I'll try with the name here, with the name of Zoris Medvedev. That's probably not right. But, uh, he came out in, in 1976 and uh, defected, and he he'd said that this would happen, and it was um, published in a, a magazine called The New Scientist in England, and they claimed to, to be a scoop. They said it was the first time this information had ever been released about this explosion in the Urals in 1958. And we called them up and we said, we beg to differ. We had this information in 1958 and we published it. And we showed them the publication and they had to then recant that in the following um, month's artic <coughs> article saying that indeed they were scooped by the Ethereum Society. So that's one. Then the other one was a year earlier, and this was in England. Uh, at that time, it was called the Wind Scale. And there was a, an accident up in the, uh, where was it? Northern England on October 10th, 1957. Um, and again, the English government denied anything dangerous happened. They said, nothing happened, don't worry about it. There's no, no accident, no deaths, not a problem. Typical cover-up. You've seen, heard about these before. Um, but we were told that it was very serious. Um, it was causing lots of mutations in the area. And again, this information came through Dr. King. He made sure that information got to the powers that be in England, and it was published in our journal. And again, not until 1988, when they had the British Official Secrets Act come out, that this was disclosed. And at that point, then lots and lots of money had to be given to the people up north because the cancer rate was just had skyrocketed up because of wind scale. So these are two kind of objective um, uh, bits of information that kind of you know shows that you know there's no way that Dr. King could have had this information. The rest of the world didn't have it at that time. But while they were here doing those things that had to be done to save us virtually, they also took the opportunity to introduce to Earth. Uh, more details of the spirituality of the universe. And this is really the, the best bit in my, my book. And remember, when the original spiritual truths were given 2,000 years ago, um, it was in an atmosphere where we didn't know about galaxies. We didn't know that planets were actually places you could actually stand on. We thought they were in little, you know, concentric circles. So the information it was high time the information was kind of expanded. But I'll first just um, take a, a stop here and explain how th they delivered the information. And this is our founder, Dr. King. Um, I have a little shot of him in his uh, Siddhasana because this is what really sets him apart from all the other contactees that I've ever read about or have seen. And that is he spent 10 years of very intense yoga practice, about 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, easy to talk about, but try doing it. Try doing it for one day for 10 hours, let alone 10 years for 10 hours. And he got himself to a very high state of um, uh, meditative ability, where you can raise a kundalini up the spine, if you know about uh, yoga. And this allowed him to bring in the information which was sent telepathically from the cosmic masters or the extraterrestrials and verbalize it so that it's very accurate. If you've ever tried to um, bring in a message from someone else, either a friend or maybe a passed away relative or your guide, if you've ever tried to do this, you know how difficult it is to separate out that message from your own mental workings. Very, very difficult. Uh, it's been said by experts that most mediums only bring through about 15, that's one five percent of what the other being is saying. But if you go into a, a very high somatic trance state, then you can bring in pretty close to 99 percent of what is being stated by the entity. And that's why uh, one reason why they chose Dr. King to bring through a lot of this knowledge. Now, he wasn't the only person that they, they spoke through, but he was the main person of this type of information. 
And fortunately for us, it was recorded um, after about 1961, it was recorded using very high quality microphones and tape recorders. Unfortunately, the, the few that I'm going to be playing for you today were pre-1961, so they aren't as perfect as after 1961. But we have over 400 reel-to-reel -reel tapes uh, with tremendous information. Just, it just boggles the mind, um, this, this, this information. And the more that you study it, um, it starts to put so many other things into order. Um, you, the more you study this information, and then you can go out and read a yoga book, or you can read a science book, or an astronomy book, or a, a book on metaphysics, and things really start to kind of fall into place. It, it's, it's, it's really staggering the, the information that they've given through in a fairly concentrated uh, manner. We're going to watch uh, Dr. King go into a, a trance state, and this is a very rare footage. Uh, we only have, I think, one, maybe one other uh, video of him going into trance and taking this information. And this was on the BBC uh, program called Lifeline um, just about 50 years ago, right, uh, May 31st. First goes into a trance state, and then he brings through the Master Aetherius. I will try it, yes. <clears throat> Mr. King has explained to me that, in fact, it may take him 30 seconds, even perhaps as much as a minute, to get into a trance. And during this time, he has suggested that we should be entirely silent. And so we will be. We will wait for the voice if it comes through Mr. King. Good evening. Good evening. My dear friend. Your name is? I am known as Isiris. Where do you come from? The planet Venus. Where are you speaking from now? I am sorry, my dear friend. I cannot answer that question for you. I had wondered simply whether you were in a vehicle of some kind, of a spaceship described by Mr. King when he was talking to me, or whether you were in your normal abode. But you can't tell me that? Uh, no. You do travel normally in what Mr. King has described as flying saucers when you move about space, do you? Yes, <coughs> that is quite correct. We have indeed been visiting this earth of yours for some 18 million of your earth years. And when you come here, what is your purpose in coming? At the moment, earth, as you call it, faces a certain situation. The situation can be described as a rather a dangerous one. You are liable to upset the balance of your earth through Number one, atomic experimentation. And number two, your deviation from the spiritual laws. And your visits are designed to warn us against this? Yes. 
Is there <coughs> one single message that you would like to give us this evening? I'm afraid it must be brief, you'll understand that. Yes. I would like to say this. If you are a Christian, then live the laws as laid down by Jesus. If you are a Buddhist, live the laws as laid down by Buddha. <coughs> if you are a Hindu, then be the best Hindu. This procedure is the one true a way for men of earth to save themselves from their lower aspects. Thank you, Atherius, very much indeed. Good night. Good night.